on this computer. WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January. I'm sorry. Yes, it is January 29th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. What's up? Oh, <laughs> everything. All of us. Uh, guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Boo uh, Joe from, all the way from Kentucky. Hey. Hello. And John Richards from London. Well, south of London, I believe. England. South Coast. Houston. Sounds good. London's, London's that way in the north, 50 miles. Uh, cool. Uh, that way doesn't work real well on the radio, but otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'm betting you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and that's just one town. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And if you'll stick around till after the break, we'll tell you more about it then. Wombat, what's our topic today? Okay, and I'm saying this as input from the questions, but why don't Christians jump off a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, it's not a, it's in, and then it's more of a thoughtful answer of like, hey, why don't they actually do that if the afterlife is better? But listen, we can get into it. We can get into it. Hey, what's up, Dr. Five? I see you. I see you. I was going to answer the question, but he's excited. He's excited. Yeah, but yeah, we're going to yeah, go ready. into, before we get too excited, let's go into our weekly invocation, then check out everyone's doing, and then we can jump into the meats. All right. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander. Al Dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. Hmm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Robin. Robin. guys it's been a really really nice saturday first sunny weekend day in this whole month got it out of our system and now we're back to the doom and gloom of the uh the return of winter so we'll have probably two more snows where we're at right now uh dread you've been you know snow you've been born right. in snow. snow is in your blood but for us it's like Oh, it'd be nice if we could have something other than overcast and ice falling out on the ground. Or weird That's why snow. I need rum in my blood to keep the snow at bay. <laughs> <laughs> and a freeze. Right. So let's do a check-in before we ask the question about why Christians don't, they, why don't they just jump off a cliff and fall into the greater theme of today's questions, which is cognitive dissonance. Dredd, how you been? I've been well, actually. Uh, just in this last week, I've been uh, contacted by our, our prophet, Bobby Henderson, nice um and we're moving forward with the expressions of interest for a, a developer of a app for past and it's mm -hmm. one of these things that you strictly opt in uh, anonymity but okay. uh, you can identify amongst other past like signal or, and, or telegram or something like and that. what is this app called please give me the good the best name ever well well, I, I'm not the one that's going to come up with a name uh, myself, uh, so that's still under consideration. And it depends, I guess, on what its ultimate functionality is, but uh, it'll have something to do with, uh, like, noodles or something. Is it Pastapharians? Pastapharians? Pastapharians. <laughs> Pasta. I don't know. <laughs> ah, at least put it on the list. At least put it on the list. Food joke. Yeah. That, that's to... that's a little hard to get around the tongue there so i i'm sure we'll come pasta parians is i always thought okay all right all right that's fair that's fair that's fair <laughs> boudreau speaking of things to get hard across the lips how have you been my friend <laughs> boudreau hard to spell too <laughs> yeah. um, I've, I've been well I, i've been uh i moved my exercise schedule around to uh, to be able to join today and uh, excited to be here and nice. yeah good to see you man fitness today. Uh, welcome to fitness yep yeah yeah Okay, okay, okay. Very, very cool to have you. Uh, let us know. So you are a big movie buff. What's the the latest movie that you've actually gone to see? 
Uh, well, just last night I watched uh, You People. Um, nice. Which was really, really entertaining. Um, yeah, 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 I saw the ad for that. Yeah. Um, oh, but I, uh, I, we were going to go see Avatar in the theater and just got busy. So we, can, so we may still do that. Um, but other than that, I can't think of the last movie I saw. Yeah, here's oh. my thing. I, I just recently saw Suburbicon based on recommendations. Yeah, yeah. I, I told you guys about that. Same vein as you people, uh, but also it not because the, the 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 racial commentary tree is in the backdrop. It colors what is uh, much more, in my opinion, a really, really fascinating dark comedy in, in the foreground. And when I saw that movie, I was like, this is really good because it's it's taking for granted how people were back there by just saying, hey, Everyone's racist, but bad stuff is going to happen. Don't worry, because more or less everyone is. It's just like, it was so good. And it yeah. never was like called out or pointed out as like a bad thing. It was just, it was what it is, but here's this other story that's in this world. And mm. so when I saw it, I thought, what a great depiction of it, because, you know, it, it, it out so often things get so melodram melodramatic and, and there's like has to be some cool thing where there's one white neighbor who's here to help out and all this stuff like no it's not about them it's about these terrible this terrible family and when i when i went to see the reviews what i was unfortunate to find out was like nobody got the joke or nobody like like that <laughs> right and, right right <laughs> and so there's nothing more frustrating than watching a good movie that you think is good and then finding out that nobody else liked that movie and i think that's how cult followings begin and so yes absolutely there's a whole realm of them. And and to believe it or not, Bujo has a whole wallpaper at Pantheon of like all of the cult movies where like Hangover, it came out, nobody liked it, but the people who liked it did like it and they supported it and they kept coming up with new ones and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that that's how you start religions. That's how you start cults. Great show to talk about that. John Richards, <laughs> how you been? Well, that sounds like Star Trek, which was a flop in the, in the beginning and then developed into a cult. I didn't anyway. Know yeah anyway um i've been fine mm. which is you know I, I like to wake up every morning so far it's successful but i i made a lovely auk atheism uk podcast this morning because Ooh. we have some issues going over here and one of our friends has been deplatformed because he got an item onto the agenda of one of our local committees for religious education mm. And uh, and it was about assemblies because a 1944 law in this country, and bear in mind that we we're not a secular country constitutionally. We are a Church of England, you know, religious country, yeah. which is ridiculous because you're of course the, all the you're going you're on the downhill side of like Canada yeah, religious yeah, awakening yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like technically. Canada. Yeah, this anachronistic law specifies right. that at school, every pupil has to meet once a day, all of them together in a, an assembly and have a Christian religious worship. And of course, most of the schools ignore this, but nonetheless, it's on the statute book and we're campaigning to get rid of it. Good. Hey, good for you. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. luck. Well, it was just like popular. in Canada. It was only in 1978 that blasphemy laws were yeah. taken off the books. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to, see, you know, in a non in a non religious sense, I'd also like to see pledge of allegiances just go away too. In America, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no real need for that. You can't force somebody to make a pledge. It's right. coercion. They wouldn't stand up anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like let's let's think about what that actually means. Dr Doubter five. Since we hate Yo, America, how you been? We hate America. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I got a new graphics card so that I could play Star Citizen better, nice. and it's working fine. Okay. And I've got a, a new, um, in, what do you call it, De devotee in Dread. He's uh, yeah. playing it yeah. now, too. Oh, We've been really? hanging out awesome. together in like, Starships. So you guys yeah, are like space engineers together, then? Uh, more like combatters. <laughs> Okay, combat. okay, okay. Soldiers, Prob problem makers, yeah. pilots. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, a lot of fun. Cool. Man, that's awesome. So, who would imagine when you were, were born, you'd be s virtual simulated space pirate or a computer I programmer because I was right, born right, in right. 1950. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of this world. <laughs> what a great, what a great life. Yeah. All right. 
We're going to go into some listener comments. The aspect of today's show or general theme is uh, cognitive dissonance. And we talked about in Discord, uh, what questions would you guys have for a group of atheists or for religious people? And the first question that we had was, why don't religious people just jump off a cliff? Pause, pause, pause. Actually, that's a really good point because they believe the afterlife is better than the life that we're in right now. So why don't they jump off a cliff? Doubter five. Uh, you're excited, so let, go for it. Go for it. Well, it would make sense, yes, of course, but the church found out pretty early on that that's not a good idea, so they made it a sin. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, they would lose memberships, and they wouldn't get their tithes anymore, so they made it a sin, so that if the last thing you did was com commit suicide, you'd go to hell. So, How about, presumably, you could help your friend by pushing them off the cliff? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> you don't you see them uh, like just ignoring safety though i mean uh, you, you'd think that if they thought they were to live forever like profess like they profess to do yeah that they would you know shoe uh, safety belts uh looking both ways when they walk into traffic sure. you know because what difference does it make wouldn't you rather reside in heaven than here on earth with all the pain right you know but they don't do that do they 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 seem to know better at some level well, help me out. My mom's a Jehovah Witness. She uh, doesn't accept blood transfusions, and that right. could actually go to save her life. Is that considered one of those loopholes where it's like, oh, I need a blood transfusion, and if I don't get one, I go to the afterlife, where mm -hmm. I'll party with God and Jesus forever? Yeah, I don't no, have maybe. an answer for that. I don't. I don't know why they would do that. Um, mm. I, there's nothing in the Bible that I know. Of course, they could probably tell you why they don't, according to the, the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. But to me, it makes no sense. Boudreau, what's up? So I, I had to pull up the, the the book on my on my app. But but uh, why there is no God? Simple responses to twenty common arguments for the existence of God. It's by Armin Navabi. I don't know if anyone's ever read it. Yeah, yeah, but. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, if I recall, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, John, uh, the kind of the intro to the book was him. I think he's Muslim, and he was mm. talking about how he jumped off the roof of a building to try to commit suicide because he was so terrified of not getting into heaven. Mm. And that there is a loophole in um, in their religion that if you're under the age of 13 or whatever it was, 14, um, you'd automatically go to right. the, the good place. And uh, he didn't. He didn't die, uh, and recovered, and then you know um, found his way toward atheism and wrote an excellent book. But it, it is to me that's that's frightening, and that, well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's another thing. Uh, even mm -hmm. in uh, mainstream Christianity in America, there's a there's a common belief that if you're below like seven years old, mm -hmm. uh, that you automatically go to heaven. And Andrea Yates took that to the logical conclusion and killed five of her children in one afternoon. Uh -huh. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're talking I mean, about you that. can, yeah, you can go on Google and uh, yeah. look up Andrea Yates for the full story. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, and Catholics, of course, have a, an answer to unbaptized babies. You know, they go to the guff yeah. or whatever it's called. Uh, some actually, that's been know. abolished. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I, Catholic I know, Church, got, yeah. but they they nevertheless have come up with something, right? What they did, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Discord was talking about Andrea Yates as well. Uh, they're bringing that up as a, a example of a woman who drowned all five of her children in a bathtub. In the bathtub one yeah. afternoon, just to make sure that they would go to heaven, just yeah. so they right. get through that loophole, right? In an evil world. Mm -hmm. Um, Dread. There's another comment. Oh, it's actually to me. Jehovah Witnesses don't accept uh blood because they they are told that. Humans must not sustain their life with another creature's blood, which includes right. other people. And that's um, why it's unholy. I'd like to get the scriptural references on that if they're listening. And would it matter? Some would of it them. Matter? No, would I'd like matter? to look it up and see what the actual wording is. Okay. okay. And what's funny is I, I was talking to a Christian earlier this week on uh, Facebook, and I quoted a scripture to her, and she said, well, you can't take it literally. <laughs> 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 and that was pretty much into the conversation that's great that's so I mean, great John, i mean like i should i should not take god's unhearing word you right know, for you know it, oh that's i so should great. go to a human to interpret it yeah it, we live in a weird zany twilight zone it really is john richards mm -hmm. why don't christians just jump off a cliff 
Well, Dred's right. They made it a sin. Hmm. And probably, or was that you, Larry? Uh, and probably yeah. because they, they don't want to reduce their congregation. They want to expand it. It's right. a business. Mm -hmm. after right, all. it is. Mm. Yeah. But, but what, what um, I think we should add to this conversation, the fact that heaven is actually a gay club in Charing Cross, <laughs> London. And oh, uh, I've not I, been there. But, uh, a I, gay I, nightclub? I, yes, yes. <laughs> But I, I've not been there, but I, I think that it might not be so um, unreal as uh, they like to imagine. But the, the interesting thing here is what is and what isn't suicide? Because one of you raised the point that you could deny medication. And whilst you wouldn't actually be no, positive. Yeah. While you wouldn't no. actually be positively killing yourself, you would be sort of negatively <laughs> killing yourself. So is that is that suicide or is that just you know allowing nature's way? Mm. Mm. Suicide by negligence. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Yeah. suicide by negligence? Okay, that's there must be a court <laughs> smoking love, cigarettes, eating yeah. poorly, yeah, not exercising, oh, smoking cigarettes, the, uh, drinking the, Captain well, Kangaroo. I'd love to see the the after work <laughs> evening ABC special where it's just courtroom in heaven. Where they're just like, yeah, you're here, but did you kind of kill yourself? Did you conspire <laughs> to commit suicide? There's a thing here. <clears throat> no. And then yeah. they go through the pearly gates. Well, uh, it's a very gray area now. You've raised all sorts of things like not taking enough exercise. Ooh. Yeah. So Discord is asking, do you guys think that like not wearing your safety belt or taking medicine, seatbelt, yeah. seatbelt, seatbelt, seat seat or taking medicine count? as ways to increase your chances to go into heaven and and why aren't those taken more often and maybe that's why anti-vaxxing is so i was common. gonna say i was <laughs> gonna say that yeah that uh isn't anti-vaxxing is just like not wearing a seat belt and then isn't that passively uh exposing yourself to yeah. uh an early death, yeah. uh, which mm -hmm. by virtue of that would be suicide by negligence let's go boudreau yeah, yeah. As the uh, resident uh, traffic engineer in, in, on the call, I have to step in and say we, we've actually demonstrated that people that don't wear their seatbelt um, actually uh, uh, incur a, a burden, a cost on society by. Of course, uh, for sure. Uh, it's the and, same thing with motorcycles and helmets. And helmets, yeah. yeah. And then, and then you could make the same argument with vaccines too. You know, mm. um, yes, uh, fewer people vaccinated. So that, so that one, that one's tricky. Uh, Wow, they're maybe they're they're trying to get more people into uh, uh, to to die prematurely. Yeah, but, so, uh, yeah. I was good. If I may add to Boudreaux's comment, Go for it. a part of that and anti vaxxing, uh, which is a real thing that you can see, is is how it overburdened the hospitals. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they were. That's what they were afraid of. And and of course, people who don't vax end mm. up in hospital. Mm. straining the system yeah. costing everybody who needs Making more people sick yeah and those yeah. who really need the the services don't get them because it's clogged up with all these right. uh, other mm. people yeah so here's an interesting thing because what well, if we're going down this suicide by neglig negligence route okay there's there's a number of avenues isn't there i mean there's not eating well there's not taking enough exercise there's smoking there's drinking yep. excessively so on and so forth is it possible that there's a cumulative effect? <laughs> how many of these, <laughs> how many of these negligences adds up to one suicide? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's right. A new one. <laughs> Great comment, John. It should be Google. charted on an Excel spreadsheet. True. Yes. True. Yes. <laughs> there's a really good follow-up comment that was just posted on Discord saying that Jesus Christ, as a human sacrifice, is in its own right an example of a suicide where he had mm. multiple opportunities yeah. to say, hey, if I just stop being a, a jerk, <laughs> excuse yeah. the colorful language, I won't have to kill myself on the cross. Yet he knew he was going to do it. He knew he knew that it was a plan and he did it anyway. That's the example <laughs> of meditated, premeditated suicide. Yeah, yeah, it's willful negligence. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, guys, are we getting closer to the end of the break? Data five, what do you think? Um, no, we still got another good five minutes for the break. All right. I got a good comment from the plug who says uh, Christianity, this is a comment as a feedback to John Richards, is in fact a business. You can tell because they don't have a single package deal. It's always a subscription service. 
You can't just do a one stop payment and be like, I'm done. I'm good for the rest of my life. You have to go to church. He says, it's literally called service. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. It's well, not a product. It's a service. Yeah. Well, not only that, but the, the Bible tells you in First Peter 3.15 that you got to go out and spread the word. Right. I mean, it's a, you got to do it. If you're yeah. talking about things you have to do for the Bible. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not a guy will do it for you. Well, okay. What I want is for mm. the governments to recognize that it's a business and start taxing them. Mm -hmm. oh yes absolutely we, yeah. they're all uh, parasites on the rest of society we have to support them through our taxes yeah oh, right mm. uh good comment on that there's private schools that are often filled with rich people who benefit other rich people because the schools get property taxes that go to that school whereas poor neighborhoods do not Poor neighborhoods are loaded with churches that don't pay property taxes, and so yeah. they are essentially a money sink for education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's worse in other countries. In countries like Nigeria, which desperately needs some welfare mm -hmm. and education in hospitals, and the only rich people in there are the pastors, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. like, sure. yeah. And uh, don't forget that the vouchers for uh, religious schools take directly take government money from regular schools public schools yes. to fund religious yes. schools and so that's a that's a money sink from uh from our educational system and tithing okay. so if you tax 10 percent of a poor community their paychecks that's money that goes literally nowhere it goes mm -hmm. back to feeling false hope dread pirate what do you got well i was going to say that uh, that happens a lot in canada uh that uh, a big portion of the public purse for education goes towards um, religious uh, or schools with uh, 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 religious um, programming, uh, right. like Christians and uh, Islam, Islamic schools, um, and also uh, now I can't remember what I was going to say, but I'll, I'll add on to that. To I would say uh, you know the the idea of cognitive dissonance or cognitive bias also is if you're a Christian, you think, well, my church is in the, uh, contributing to the community. Is it or is it contributing to only to other Christians? Right? right, because you have a, a a building that only satisfies the needs of the people who go to it, and meanwhile, yeah. everyone else that needs that property tax or that money or that funding or that support system don't get it unless they subscribe to your dogma, or right. they build another <clears throat> church down the street and suck right. more money from the community. Yeah, to well, it's, their it's, particular needs. It's it's an icon from medieval days to to, to the present. You know, in certain neighborhoods, the nicest building is the church. Right. The money yeah. flows yeah. from the community to the church, which yeah. builds, yeah. you know, yeah. hoards the money or builds the church or whatever. Yeah. And then well, when you go, when when they need money, they come to you. But when you need money, they tell you to go to God. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, a great model. It's, it's a diode. Well, <laughs> over here in the UK, we have laws against discrimination. So what I would like to see is those laws being extended to the usage of faith buildings mm. so that if on Monday they have a Christian meeting in their hall, on Tuesday they've got to have a Muslim one, and on Wednesday they've got to have a Jewish one, and that applies to all of the different religions. Or, or secular ones. They could open it as yes. a, a yes. community club yes. on yes. certain days of the week. Yes, yes. Pay back well, you know, to, they, to they the say community. about McDonald's that McDonald's is not in the business of selling hamburgers and fries. They're in the real estate business. <laughs> that's what that's what religions are when it comes to that thing. They're not saving souls. They're, <laughs> they're selling. They're collecting real estate. That's it. They're yep. They're they're kick, they're making that money. That's what we do. Well, uh, we don't sell a franchises product generally. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, are we getting closer to the bottom? Yep. All right. Sounds, let's take that break. Sounds right. Okay. Uh, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tech, uh, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank okay. you, everybody. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We were founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now, and we have over a thousand members. 
We also have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville, Soul City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables over its pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meeting. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can also find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist, that'll take you there. Just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Star one. Star one. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Hey, we're going to go more into the cognitive dissonance well, but first let's check in with Boudreaux. Boudreaux, you know, not to pick on you with your uh, Catholic background, but did you ever have a favorite Catholic saint? The people want to know. And yes, the why, people want to know. <laughs> and why is it St. Lucy? Okay, that was the question. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, you thought I paid attention way more uh, when I was in Catholic school, uh, Catholic uh, <laughs> well, Catholic church service, and then okay. some some Wednesday night Catholic uh, after school things. Uh, I, was, I wasn't I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we call it CCD. Uh, I forget what it stood for. But since I'm a good steward of the internet, um, I Google searched my favorite uh, saint, which is going to be Saint Agatha. Okay, uh, because apparently she's the patron saint of breast cancer patients, uh, oh, martyrs, rape, rape victims, and others. So, so how is it a saint? Uh, with, they didn't even know about <laughs> breast cancer back then, did they? You can no, make no. new saints, right? Mm. Like that's how yeah. it works with the Catholic Church. Okay. You can just like make new ones. But well, there's one for breast cancer. That's good. Well, th well this one apparently, um, Saint Agatha also invoked against earthquakes, natural disasters, and fires, which to me makes it sound like she's like a bad guy in a video game. So I'm going with Saint Agatha. Okay. Okay. Now yeah. it's on the list. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Plug says, thank you. John Richards got a question for you. Um, you are a scientist. I would love to know why are there religious scientists? So here's the actual question. For real though, if there's any scientists who are religious, I'd like to know how they think the universe started and how that ties in with their beliefs. Why are there religious scientists in the first place? Mm, that's a question that's always puzzled. Well, it's just, go ahead. If if you are a scientist, you are working day by day mm. looking for evidence. And there is no evidence for any God whatsoever that's come to my attention anyway. And right. we've been looking for two and a half thousand years or so. So longer than that. Yeah, indeed. So what happens when they is is there some sort of you know, you know at the airport you go through this arch and they they, some sort of detection me mechanism works out what you're carrying on you, whether you're smuggling, I don't know, guns through or whatever. Do they have one of those at the door to their scientific establishment so that once they've walked through that, they're cleaned of the need to seek evidence? Oh, and they're man. Happy to... Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> I would love that in the future to just be like, here's a here's a scanning device that just clears you of all unneeded dogma in your brain. It yes, just frees yes. you from like all these really bad ideas. You go through it and you're like, oh, maybe Ryan Seacrest is a pretty good host. You know, yes. just like you go through, ah, oh, this is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because so, I I think something like that must happen. They've got this double oh. personality uh, that, that, mm. on the one hand, partitioning. Yeah, 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 compartmentalizing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, it was what was it called? Um, Non-overlapping um, magisteria. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens? They've got this compartment in their brain which works on Sundays when they're okay. in church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, <clears throat> then from, from Mondays to Fridays, that one switched off, and the other one switched on. The rational one who switched yeah. on. And it's, you can. Uh, I think it was uh, Stephen Jay Gould that came up with that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, himself okay. being a scientist and all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a very interesting way to look at it. When you're saying yeah. switching off parts of your brain, when you do like these talks with people, like Larry and Dread Pirate and I have done, uh, you can see it happen. You can see them talk. Hey, tell me why you think tectonic plates are a thing, and they'll tell you. They'll list off a number of criteria that are all very well substantiated, well researched. Mm -hmm. Not absolutely sure. 
but altogether make it such that they've met the the claim of why are there tech mm-hmm. platonics and like very well evidenced. And then you say like, so then if you have all this evidence for this, why do you believe in a God? And then switch. Well, back when I was in third grade, my, I had a, a, a sore stomach and I asked my mom to give me a prayer and, and it went away and not proved God exists to me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, right, whoa, right. look at that. Look at that. Yeah. The little firing yeah. switch. Yeah. Daughter yeah. five, yeah. it looked like you and wanted it, to. No, go for it, Dred. Well, I was going to say, uh, uh, talking about calibration, because mm. that's what we often do in, in uh, Socratic examination, is to calibrate uh, confidence and beliefs. Yes. And, uh, you know, sometimes, like you were saying, an example of the tectonic plates, where you could have that conversation with someone and, and then ask them, well, what is your confidence that that is, in fact, the case? Well, you know, 95%, that's Correct. kind of what the evidence is. Correct. And then this thing about mom praying for you and carrying your stuff, well, 100%, 100%. Yes. Right. How could I lower your confidence by 1%? Well, you can't nothing. do it. I'm Absolutely 100% nothing. confident. Yeah, so. it's a bizarre situation. So you're closed-minded on it. No, I'm not closed-minded. I'm just will never change my mind about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear things like that. But listen, um, what you were saying before, John Richards, it was really interesting because you had this idea of scientist jobs are finding evidence and they haven't found evidence for God. The thing <clears> is <throat> they found evidence for God. It's just not enough evidence to support a God claim. Uh, they have terrible antidotes, antidotes, my bad. Uh, don't, don't, don't arrest me, John Riches. I'm sorry for pronouncing the C in antidote, but, uh, uh, they have, um, you know, personal experience. They have yeah. arguments from comfort. <clears throat> they have a, a, a book of claims that they believe are true. They have arguments oh. from authority. <clears throat> All of these things do not add up to any worthwhile belief or, yeah, or yeah. demonstration of a God existing yet. They've reduced their criteria to to a yeah, yeah. second standard where they will mm-hmm. use that to confirm that a god exists whereas mm-hmm. for everything else they have a completely different standard and so <laughs> essentially they're operating on a double standard they found exactly. evidence but they're willing to believe it on that low standard what do you think yeah, yeah. so they so they leave their laboratory and then the bar lowers right down to ankle height <laughs> correct correct yeah it's really frustrating hey dr yeah. what's up Oh, what gets me is when, when, and I did this myself when I was a believer or getting close to non-belief, you know, give me a sign Mm. and anything that out of the ordinary that happens is quote, a sign from God. And not only just a sign from God, but a sign from that particular God, which supports that particular religion. Uh, Like I I asked one guy, uh, I told him I was an atheist and he couldn't believe it. And I said, well, why do you (laughs) believe? What convinced you that God was real? He right. said, well, one day I I uh, asked for a sign and everything, every number I looked at had sevens in it. It was just all over the place. <laughs> my, my, my paycheck, you know, right. uh, everything, license plates. So that was good enough for him. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's so shame. It's just not a phone call. It's like, oh, I'm God. I, I exist by the way I exist. That would yeah. be at least better than yeah. I found a seven in the car. Yeah. Going by that reasoning, obviously, 007 <laughs> is God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dread, what do you think? Go. Yeah, I was going to say that, uh, like, in, in for, for Pastafarians, or for myself as a Pastafarian anyway, um, my, uh, my, my Pastafarianism is, is based on um, the idea that there are unknowable aspects to existence that I will never ever have a solution for and it's it serves kind of like as an avatar or as um a placeholder where i can celebrate those things um without without conflict you know what sure. i mean sure so uh do i believe in a literal flying spaghetti monster well probably not but you know you, you think about quantum entanglement and string theory and and the you know the the forms of matter inside a neutron star, which are related to forms of pasta, these are all really uh, just as good an explanation as any right. for those things that we'll never understand fully. I see Pasifarianism as sort I, of like, that's where I place myself. Pasifarianism is a uh, uh, avatar for a celebration of the unknown and complex, yep. and and exactly. it is a shrinking unknown because we are figuring things out but it's so vast that it's like hey we'll be here for a while this unknown thing's gonna be here but let's just have some pasta and enjoy the fact that <laughs> there's just gonna be some things we won't ever figure out isn't that cool though isn't that actually yeah, wow. interesting i like that a lot as, as a an approach to it uh boudreaux i saw your hand what's up 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that how you um, uh, summarize that Pastafarianism, though. That's that's Thank a good. Uh, yeah. So um, Neil Neil deGrasse Tyson did a. Um, I saw it on a YouTube video. I'm not sure <clears throat> if it was a lecture or what it was, but he he basically he he turned the the question. A lot of people look at uh, religiosity compared to uh, degrees, you know, in education, and there are there are um, you know, X percentage of religious people with people with bachelor's degrees, let's say, and the 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 percentage kind of drops as you get to you know higher levels levels of education. You get into right. masters and right. PhD, and and it drops even most significantly when you get into the real harder sciences, mm. um, you know, astrophysics and and so on. And and so you know, people have said for for years, you know, the the more advanced degree, the more advanced scientist. Uh, uh, again, in the hard science, nothing to nothing against the other scientists, but I think it stands to reason that there's different type of thinking that goes into some of these hard sciences and, right. and the, those are the ones naturally would, would um, reject a God. What Neil deGrasse Tyson did was he looked at the interesting pieces. Let's look at the actual religious people that have these advanced degrees. Those are the people worth talking to, studying, interviewing. You, you will have this advanced degree and you're a huge minority in your field. And because you still believe in a God, those are the, those are the interesting people. So I don't know if there's always been a follow-up to it, but I'm, I would be really curious too. And you probably see it Ty, yeah. in your, in your uh, uh, work and, and field, but oh, yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're surrounded by, and I see it sometimes too, and on, on yeah. campus and in, in engineering, it's like, you know, the, the, it, it surprises me to see someone with a, yeah. a PhD and advanced degree and still, Absolutely. you know, yeah. Right. Well, the most famous example of this, of course, is Francis Collins. Yes. Who uh, he, he was um, key person in the Human Genome Project, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Priest. Yeah. He he oh, was um, he was a pure scientist. Not Collins. No. No. Go ahead. He was a pure scientist who had a revelation when he saw a frozen waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That made him become a Christian. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> really? And convinced mm. him 100%. It's I can show like him a bunch of frozen waterfalls right now. You can go on Google. Yeah. Did he have Google mm. images back then? <laughs> <laughs> Here, okay. Here's an idea, though. I okay. think we've now we've got chat GPT. Oh, yeah. yeah. We yeah. should ask it. We should, we should ask it. Why are yes. there religious scientists? Ah, uh, yeah, I can do this. Next meeting, we'll do uh, Chappy GPT, where we will generate 50 or 10 questions for the show. Yes. See how yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. 10 questions that will stump atheists. How about that? We'll ask Chat GPT to Ooh. give that to us and see if we can field them. So uh, that this is a new chat box program or something? Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's, really it's an nice. AI. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's state-of-the-art AI. It is. A so, uh, and, we, and it's called what? Chat... GPT. GPT. It's a step forward. So a uh, quick sidebar. There's things called Turing tests, which is like a really fun. Yeah. They actually make a they actually make a competition where you can see on YouTube people competing against each other with robots that they produce that are oh. made to trick other people that, that they're actually people or a chat robot. And oh. we've since 2012 have made uh, uh, a, a, a chat bot that can actually more than 50% of the time actually convince people that they're actually talking to an actual human being. Yeah. And companies have been buying those programs and use them for their like customer service operations. Mm -hmm. so, like when you go on Amazon mm -hmm. and you think you're talking to a person, maybe from like India or somewhere, it's actually just a robot that's like using the yeah, fact yeah. that it's foreign to cover up some of the grammatical mistakes that it's making, yeah. but it's still just fixing stuff for you automatically. And then yep. finally, <laughs> they have an open AI which is basically, <clears throat> hey, anybody can use this. You can go on, it's it's partially owned by Google or at least sponsored by it, but they're a $29 billion owned, uh, privately owned distribution of open software. You can go on ChatGPT, log in and play around with this computer that will write song lyrics for you, poetry mm -hmm. on very, very short prompts. My friend from work said, write a poem about our job, posted it and we got like this, epic mm. odyssey of like yeah. everyone about our job the nature of the work that we do and it's all in lyrical sense i'm like this is yeah, scary yeah. this is actually very well yeah, done. it's very scary imagine <laughs> a, how you'd feel if you're a writer for shows yeah, that, yeah. That they could mm. just take over i'm gonna get some new Listen, we need better affairs. writers for shows most shows are, are really bad there's only like one yeah. or two good shows a, a, right, a year. Right. we all know that right um dread i was going to tell you that uh most of these these chat gbt interactions are all text-based 
when you go there, you have to type in and they give it right. back in, yeah. t- in text. However, if you go to YouTube, you can find a lot of uh, videos where they have taken the text and run it through an emulator yes. uh, oh. of a person, you know, who's uh, talking the lines and doing right. the speech instead of, so you don't have to read all that stuff. Right. And okay. they also have videos where they have one GPT or one AI talking to another that way. Mm. Right. So the conversation is very yeah, yeah. interesting. What's really it's funny is there's, there's a cool point where some of those videos, the two robots are talking to each other mm-hmm. and the other robots like, are you a chat bot? And the other one's like, yeah, are you a chat bot? It's like, oh, we're both chat bots. <laughs> I was just like, this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is yeah. getting, it is getting really scary. We, it mm-hmm. started back in the Victorian times when they had things called automatons mm. where the, the little manicule men, figures, like uh, robots, but hidden inside was right. a tiny little man who operated them. A uh-huh. homunculus. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, answered all their mm-hmm. questions. But yep. then, of course, more recently, we've had the Deepak Chopra yes. quote generator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and the, the chat, yeah. chat GPT seems to be the grown-up version of that. But it is a amazing, and I'm sure it would pass the Turing test. Oh yeah, yeah. And and in fact, they they have given it some exams. It's done some exams, and it's passed. Not not top of the class, but Mm -hmm. it's got middling results, middling grades in I forget which subject areas. But they can create exams too. Right. You can ask it to create a, a homework assignment. Yeah, yeah. Let me throw this out as well. There's high school teams now that can design Mm -hmm. chatbots that can break the Turing test or get through it. And that's only through iterative studies of people working together and not praying Mm -hmm. or relying on God to fix it, but using skills in software engineering and human understanding Mm -hmm. to improve and teach better generate teach generations more adequately Mm -hmm. so they can more effectively Mm -hmm. meet these like bars. We are so excited in science because we're constantly coming up with new things. And this is an example of a new thing brought about through the scientific method. Whereas Mm -hmm. religion is still hashing out the same 40 or six stories, 46 stories, you know, every, every, you know, 52 stories, I'm sorry, or some, sometimes they reuse them. We all know that pastors don't always have a new story to tell, but it's the same yearly worth of stories every single time it's dyad. (laughs) And it's, and hopefully as, as a, as a global community, we are understanding that and moving away from religiosity and moving towards this new, exciting stuff that science keeps coming out with, because we need more people to contribute to that. More women, females, born people, everyone, everyone doing it improves it because that's the way how we get better at stuff with just all these new hands and minds working together on these new projects i feel like that is the stuff while scary in some aspects all new technology was scary i mean i remember when we first got our first microwave that was terrifying we're like what in the world it's not even hot and it's making it hot what's going on and it wasn't called a microwave it was called a radar range (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah. But remember how scary it was when you got like HD cameras for the first time. You're like, wait a second. That's mm-hmm. what people see when they see me. I don't like this. We always have these big swings, but in the end, it always tends to improve because we make the quality of life better. I feel like stuff like this could really improve a lot of things. So yay, science. And uh, go on ahead, Boudreaux. Go, go on. Just real quick to, to tap on what you're saying. Yeah. Remember, there was a time. Well, I don't remember it. But uh, people wouldn't get into an elevator unless it had an elevator operator. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, remember th- I don't remember that, but I do. I am aware of <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. John, I what's up? I miss those. I miss those. <laughs> John, they, what's they up? Just, they just stood there and said things like, ladies' underwear. Yes. <laughs> Men's wear for four. <laughs> So I I wanted to say that the I want to plug because yesterday Mm. I had this fantastic guest on Free Thought Hour, very brilliant philosopher type who we we started to talk about the the developments in AI. And his opinion is, and I tend to agree with him, that the Turing test is too linguistic because Mm. it would eliminate our own infants as being conscious, just because they can't speak yet. Um, You know, and there's another aspect there too about uh, AI is that you never hear one say, you know, I was thinking. (laughs) You mean they don't use like superlatives? It doesn't say, well, I had this idea. Like AIs don't come up with original ideas, right? So there you go. Next question for chat GPT. 
Have you ever had an idea? Have you okay. ever had an original idea? Yeah, we may have to define original because they can definitely come up with things that are essentially novel just through brute force, right? In the same way that a human being can come up with a new song, they can come up with like a new poem. Yeah, yeah they but, can do it. You know, they, uh, they wouldn't be able to sit there and say, well, I was thinking about the nature of time and I developed this uh, new theory about uh, space and uh, the space time continuum or something like that. I mean, that's not going to happen. Oh, you that's uh, classic final last that. words no. by Dread Pirate Hicks. Mm -hmm. Listen, I can no. tell you, not no, chat GPT, but there's another AI program that I'd like for you guys to check out after this, where it's essentially a prompt and it will make art for you. And it will right. make I started art. to say go ahead, know, Dread. Or go ahead, Dutter. Uh they they already create new songs that music didn't videos exist, the art that, that didn't yeah. exist, stories that didn't exist. Yeah. Um they're uh, they're you know you're saying they don't say that i'm thinking because right. that's all they do <laughs> but like they think uh, they don't do anything else but think pretty much just want to put something here hopefully so like we have this idea of what thinking is that humans do and we have it on yeah. some of the pedestal but it's actually a fairly mathematical process that could be mm -hmm. processed yeah. and emulated very well to where the things where it's like it could be so efficient that you don't have to think or express it as, well, I was thinking of a new plant. Yeah. It's like, no, here's 40 new plants that I just came up with. Like, these it's, are all it, awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm coming up with a billion of them every millisecond. It's I processing, love comparison, comparing, right. and producing, which is all things that computers yeah. do well. Yeah, like yes, a new exactly. network and that's, and that's mapped kind off of the way the how we think anyway. Yeah that, yeah, that was the point I was going to make is like, you know, all these chat boxes rely on prompts to do the things that oh. they do. Yeah. What would be really interesting is if you woke up one morning and there was this new piece of work that had not been prompted in any way, yeah. shape, or form, and then that being the responsibility of an AI. Ah, well, well Boudreaux would argue with that. That's not even free will. Because <laughs> none of our yeah, thoughts are, yeah. are spontaneous well, you, in a weird way anyway. Yeah, well, when yeah. you th and you think about all the, uh, the art the original creations of, like in the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Mm. Uh, well, they were prompted by the church, you know, right. Michelangelo, paint yeah. this, paint that. These are the scenes we want. So, mm -hmm. you know, those you. are original uh, compositions, but he did them, you know, after being mm -hmm. prompted. True enough, true enough. Pujo, what do you got? So your, your free will comment always always sparks ideas for me. Of course. I, it'd be really interesting to, to uh, quiz a chat bot to say, <laughs> come up, give me a random movie. Um, and and they could very easily tap into a movie database and pick a movie at random. Mm, Don't right. you think mm. that it would be pretty obvious if you if you asked for you know ten random movies from from us from humans uh, even us on the call versus a chatbot? Wouldn't you get a very different um, sampling of yeah. movies? I mean, I, I, I would, would argue that. Yeah, I'd argue the chapbook yeah. would be even more random than mine because mine would just be it, like well, Jurassic definitely Park. would be more random. But <laughs> our, our our picks. Our picks, because of our lack of free will, I, I right. think, would be they, they would they would all kind of like tie to they would be recent movies or they would be really popular movies or they Marvel would be movies. Yep. Marvel ones that I, really appeal to you. Right. Yeah, I am not going to I am not going to suggest a movie I've never heard of. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't. So that one. Might. That one. But the chatbot might. So I bet if you did a some kind of a, a, a distribution of like the popularity uh, or the, the star rating or, or whatever, uh, or the gross uh, uh, income, the gross, whatever uh, the, the movie collected, I guarantee that the, the chat bot would have a much lower mm. uh, score on right. popularity or whatever versus. So there, there's your Turing test right there. Just right. ask, ask them for a random movie. I mean, it used Box to be the case where people, that you were the case where people would say you can never beat a human being with, at chess because chess is this, you know, really abstract sort of, conversation between two very brilliant forward thinkers who can like plan things ahead it's like no like there's a there's a way to meticulously design objectives in chess to where you can say i think these moves are better and i'm going to just try to make the best move each time and now we have computers on my phone that can beat me or grandmasters right and that's really useful because mm. it can train grandmasters so like it didn't ruin chess it just made people better at chess players because now there's a higher standard i feel like chatbot and like these art programs are just going to do the same thing they'll inspire more things from people but they'll also make people understand that the way how we understand things can be understood and that is a very useful 
thing because now we don't rely on mysticism or religion or spiritualism to explain that to us. Now we know the process and we can now find the best process to educate children and train ourselves at new cool things that we want to learn. Like this is a benefit if we just understand that everything we do in here can be fairly well understood and if anything, done better. And I think that's a cool thing. John Richards, I think you had a comment. Yeah, well, it's, you've moved on. <laughs> but, ah, sorry, uh, sorry, buddy. It was about these illustrator programs because a friend of mine is a drummer in a heavy metal band and he uses it to design their album covers. And Ooh. it's so fascinating how, how many, you, you put in a few prompts and like you know I, I don't know a devil's fork or something and, and it comes up with 40 different examples oh, in cool. three seconds and he spends hours through into the early morning <laughs> trying to decide which one of these wonderful designs is the best right right I'll, I'll also throw one last thing out before we close the show I enjoy drawing and the fact that there's a computer that can make art doesn't take away the value that I put into the practice of drawing. In the same way that there are people who love writing and the fact that yeah. there's a program that can write poems too doesn't take away any joy that that person can get from it. It's I just think we are going to evolve to where we appreciate the things that we love to do more versus mm -hmm. doing them to necessarily gain or profit or a notoriety or an audience or things, things like that. When we have robots capable of doing routine tasks for us and that expansion of routine expands, then more people will have more time to enjoy the things that they love to do because we have the basic needs being met through automation. And I think that is yeah. generally a really good goal, the improvement of society through letting robots do what they want to do. And then it's a question of what can we do to make the robots enjoy what they're doing <laughs> before the robot wars start? <laughs> All right, guys, Dread Pirate, where can we find ourselves at? You can find me uh, on YouTube at Mind Pirate M I N D P Y R A T E. Nice. I live stream this at uh, 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings, and then later do the views on the news at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. PST. Dread Pirate. One little last note: I would say you should always plug your show as P Y R A T. Right? <laughs> it's right there for you. Great. <laughs> Pedro, something that you'd recommend we check out before next week. Oh, what would I recommend? Um, I was going to recommend to the AI um, people to um, uh, to uh, program their bots to sort movies by box office results Ooh. and then randomly select from there. So then, then we, we now they can pass the Turing test. So I think we we solved that problem. So very cool. My yeah. my random little thing is they make uh, vacuum robots now that have little AIs guys in mm. them that will now instead of just smearing dog poop all over your carpet, like look at it and be like, hey, I think that's dog poop. It's a amorphous shape. I'm going to put that into my category catalog and use my neural network wow. to recognize whatever things are in your home. Wow. You mm -hmm. could get that. You could not get that. I just don't have a dog. It saved me. Get a cat with a litter box. You'll solve yourself a lot of problems. John <laughs> Richards, what's up? Well, does it come out with a little dustpan and brush and scoop up? <laughs> like the Jetsons, right? Yes. Yeah. It vaporizes yeah. it. Vaporizes. <laughs> it has la my, my robot has lasers on it. It's kind of interesting. John. Yeah. Free Thought Channel. That's where nice. to go. And I, I strongly recommend this for Free Thought Hour chat I had yesterday with Alan Colcoon. And yes, uh, views on the news later on today. And the sad news is that one of our panelists, Frank Lovell, is no longer mm. with us. Mm. He's with the noodly one. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear. Better five. Anything you'd like to close out the show with? Uh, well, yeah. Um, we were getting back to the subject originally was uh, cognitive dissonance and irrational dichotomies of thought. Uh, I. On my website, digitalfreethought.com, if you click on the blog button, uh, I have a, an article there called Irrational Dichotomies of Religious Thought, and I recommend, uh, if you'd like to know more about that, to go there and, and read that. Um, what else? My, I have a book on atheism that's available on uh, Amazon. Thank you, Dred, for holding it up. I appreciate that. Uh, it's called Atheism, What's It All About? And uh, I take the articles from my website and put them in the book. So it's a book of articles about the subject of atheism. Uh, my YouTube handle is at Doubter5. I have a lot of 
content on there as well as animated. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Later.